Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Ableton Live 11's LFO to manipulate, modulate, and add interest to different parameters of Ableton Live 11. If you've got a copy of Intro, Standard, or Suite, you will have access to the LFO as it comes part of the core library. It's now part of Ableton Live 11, which is great because it's a brilliant tool to use. Not only can you map it to Ableton's parameters, but you can also map it to third-party VSTs. If you've got a copy of Serum or Vital or any other external third-party instrument, I'll show you in this video how you can map the LFO to those instruments as well. As always, the timestamps to the video are below in the description, as well as all the other links and information that you might want to know about music production and this video and anything about me as well. All right, let's jump in. So in the session view, I have some clips and these clips are just what I've put together for this video. I'm going to play you all of them so you can hear what it sounds like. Cool. And we're going to be focusing our attention on the top loop. So the top loop is this. This is what it sounds like. And as you can hear, it's very central at the moment. There's not much movement. It's just a tops percussion loop in the middle of the image. And we want to add some more interest to this loop and create some movement. So we want to add some audio effects first. And the first one that I'm going to add is erosion. Erosion adds noise to your track. So we've got sign, wide noise and noise. If I move this control up, you'll hear the differences on erosion. But obviously, as soon as we let go of that little circle in the middle, we don't have any of that movement anymore. So we can use the LFO in Ableton to move the erosion without actually having to touch it. And the LFO is a low frequency oscillator. If you don't know what that is, it's a low frequency pulsating signal that moves over time and will move the parameter. So if I grab the LFO, in Ableton Live 11, you can find the LFO in modulators and you'll see here that it's a Max for Live device. It's got the Max for Live symbol, which looks like the Max for Live symbol down here in the categories as well. Drag the LFO onto your track and you can see in the window that we have the low frequency pulsating signal moving up and down. You can change this signal. So at the moment it's a sine wave, but you can also change it to a triangle you could change it to a square and you could change it to random, which is going to randomly move up and down the spectrum. Let's go back to the sine wave. So this sine wave, now I want to map to the amount on the erosion. So come to map and then click on amount. And you'll see now that the amount of erosion is moving up and down in relation to the sine wave that we have on the LFO. Now we can reduce the amount that it's coming up and down by decreasing the depth. So the depth on the LFO will bring that down so that it is now just moving around the middle. But maybe we want to increase the rate at which it moves because at the moment it's moving just a little bit. So we can increase the rate. And now we've got some erosion bouncing around a very small space. So let's listen to the top loop and see what it sounds like. And without the LFO. Let's increase the depth. Decrease the rate. So you can hear how we've added some movement to the top loop by adding some erosion and mapping the LFO to create some movement. The other elements of the LFO to look out for, as well as all the different waveforms, let's stick it on random. We also have jitter, which jitter will just add some extra movement. As you can see, it's jittering. Uh, smooth will smooth that out so it will make it nice and smooth. If you wanted to offset the waveform either down or up, you could offset there. 
You also have the option to change the phase. So this moves the waveform left or right. And you can hold. So it just holds it and also re-trigger. So that will re-trigger it from its start position. You have a minimum and a maximum value up the top here. So the minimum value, if you don't want it to go all the way down to the bottom of the LFO's capacity, you want it to start at 40% and you don't want it to go all the way up to the 100% capacity of the LFO, you could bring it down. And you can see now with our erosion, it's only moving a little bit. So we could increase the rate, increase the depth. So you've got some really interesting movement there. Let's listen to it. It feels a lot more random and random sometimes is good. Now with the LFO, you can also map it multiple times. If you come here to the top right corner, click here. So let's map it to the frequency because at the moment, the frequency of this erosion is just the same. It's 6.42 kilohertz. So let's map it to the frequency. And now you can see that we've got some crazy movement along the erosion. Let's listen to it. That's pretty cool actually. And if you have different audio effects in here, you could also multiple map using this LFO. And that is brilliant because you're then adding cohesion to your movement. If you have lots of different LFOs doing lots of different things and you've got different movement going on, it could be a little bit messy because you've got lots of different rhythms. Whereas if you use the same LFO, particularly on the same track with audio effects, you're maintaining that same rhythm because it's just the one rhythm in this LFO. So let's grab another another effect. I'm going to get the vocoder and bring the vocoder down and let's map now to the dry wet and the foreman. And we'll listen to the vocoder. You also have the option to adjust the minimum and maximum values in the range in the LFO for the different mapped parameters, which is very helpful because I can hear that the vocoder is dancing around a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring up the range and bring down the maximum and bring up the minimum and bring down the maximum on the dry wet as well. So now you can see that we have a little bit of movement. Let's play it again. Perfect. So we're adding character, we're adding movement to our audio effects on the top loop. Let's have a look at mapping to a third party VST. So I'm going to come to Serum and now I'm going to get another LFO. So back to audio effects into modulators, LFO and drag it onto the VST channel. So I want to move a parameter of Serum, but obviously in Serum we have LFOs, but maybe you want to modulate something separately using a LFO on the Ableton track. So open up Serum by clicking on the downwards triangle and you can see now that we have this window to add plugin parameters to this panel, click the configure button. So click configure, and now we want to pick our parameter. I'm going to pick the cutoff of the filter. So tap on the cutoff and now you can see that the filter cutoff has appeared in this window. Press configure, come out of Serum and now we can map to the filter cutoff. So map the LFO to the filter cutoff and we can see that it's moving. Let's listen to it. Sounds cool.
Let's have a go at mapping an LFO to the LFO. So this time I want to randomize the rate and the depth. I'm going to stick it on random. I'm going to reduce the rate and the depth. So let's make it nice and slow. Increase the jitter. Smooth it a little bit. Okay, that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to map this to the rate. And I'm also going to come in and map this to the depth. So now we've got a little bit of randomization going on. I'm going to decrease the maximum amounts so that it's not too much. And I would say that is, that's cool. I like that. I just like that. I'm going to solo it and play it, see what it sounds like. You can hear how the LFO is a brilliant Max for Live device. Not only can you map it to Ableton, but you can also map it to third party instruments and you can also map it to itself. It's brilliant. I highly recommend that you use it. Grab it. It's in all versions of Ableton Live 11. I'm Becky Safe. Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you liked it, please like it. Comment and subscribe as it pushes the YouTube algorithm and I would really appreciate it if you could help me out as that will help to push these videos to get them out there and reach a wider community. Check out my merchandise and the links to my courses below and all the other stuff that you might need to know about me. Jump in the Discord to join the music production community and I'll see you in the Twitch channel as well as I stream on Twitch three times a week doing music production. And that is it. That's it for another video. I will see you again later. Bye.